The School of Medicine at Johns Hopkins is a really exciting place to be doing research. It's a very interactive and vibrant environment. And we're also joined to the best hospital in the world, and this sets up a lot of opportunities for exciting collaborations with clinical investigators. The overall mission of the Department of Cell Biology is education and research. So our goal is to discover new mechanisms in cell biology and change people's thinking about how cells function. Our second goal is to train a new generation of cell biologists. Our department has strengths in a number of different areas. We're strong in uh, cell migration and cell division, in organ formation during embryogenesis, in protein processing and its regulation by extracellular signals, in organelle formation and maintenance, and in stem cell biology. Most of our investigators are driven by curiosity. They want to understand more about the process they're studying at a deeper level. But time and again, it's been shown that curiosity-driven discoveries really have a profound effect on physiology and medicine. My lab's research is in the area of, of cell shape and cell shape control, and we're interested in how cells are able to assume all the various shapes, but then be able to dynamically change between them. Uh, to allow them to carry out their very specialized tasks. We can't study that for every cell type at once, so we use a very simple model system and model shape change, which is cytokinesis, the process by which a mother cell can divide into two daughter cells. We're interested in all of the, uh, the molecular biology, the biochemistry, and the biophysics of the process, uh, particularly focused on, on really being able to link the molecular mechanisms to the physical process of cell division. Cell division is important because it's an important step that allows cells to grow and proliferate. Uh, and in fact, it's one of the processes that when it goes wrong can lead to some of the unwanted genetic changes uh, called aneuploidy that can promote the cell to become transformed and, and take on a tumor type. Our work is very interdisciplinary in nature. and We've worked with engineers and physicists and biophysicists over the last 10 years and combined their expertise with our own in, in cell biology and, and biochemistry. In an even longer term horizon, we'd like to be able to understand these shape change events well enough that we can then develop novel small molecules and, and compounds which will let us to be able to go in and control and tune the mechanical features and help guide shape change processes, perhaps maybe even coming up with some novel treatments for different diseases. My laboratory focuses on a striking premature aging disorder called hutchinson guilford progeria syndrome, or HGPS for short. Children with this disorder fail to thrive, and by the time they're 10 years old, uh, they look quite old. Unfortunately, these children die in their mid-teens of cardiovascular disease. Despite the tragic uh, nature of this disease, there's cause for some optimism. We now know um, that HGPS results from a mutation in the nuclear scaffold protein, lamin A, and particularly a defect in the uh, processing of lamin A by a zinc metalloprotease. We've decided to uh, really bear down and focus on the molecular details of that processing event. This work is important because Premature aging symptoms have much in common with normal physiological aging. My research group is focusing on mitochondria. Mitochondria are very dynamic structures, continuously fusing and dividing. So we are trying to figure out why and how mitochondria fuse and divide using different types of experimental systems such as yeast and mice. So the problem we are working on is very important for human health because changes, alteration in mitochondrial fusion and division are linked to many human diseases. Most of them are aging-related neurodegenerative diseases. My long-term goal is to connect these knowledge to human diseases. We want to figure out why and how changes mitochondrial dynamics leads to many human diseases. Our department, as well as Johns Hopkins, has an excellent environment in which many scientists are collaborative and interactive. So when we 
encounter new problems, we can always find someone with necessary expertise. The question that my lab focuses on is how cells become specialized. We study a model organ, we study two model organs in a model organism. We study the salivary gland, a simple unbranched tube, and the trachea, a highly branched tube. We spend a lot of time at the microscope just looking at things. So we do uh, electron microscopy, which allows us to see things at a very, very high resolution. We do confocal imaging, which allows us to localize proteins in wild type and mutant embryos. And we do live imaging, which allows us to see the process as it actually occurs. Our short-term, long-term goal is to take what we've learned in the Drosophila salivary gland into mosquitoes because mosquitoes are an important vector species for malaria and the malaria parasite has to pass through the salivary gland in order to infect a human. And so if we can disrupt salivary gland function in mosquitoes based on what we've learned about in Drosophila, then I think we have a good chance of having another way of attacking that disease and maybe reducing the incidence in countries where it's really a problem. I think that's the new frontier in cell biology, understanding how cells do special types of jobs in the body and understanding how cells work with each other to build organs and tissues that have the right shape and size and end up in the right place in the animal.